Hi. Yeah, you have so many AI talks today, even though it's JavaScript event, but like it's probably everything relates to AI nowadays. And yeah, last year we had like a boom of LLMs and uh, so many models and things to run. Uh, so I'm not an ML engineer myself. Uh, I'm more like a cloud infrastructure guy and I already had the platform to essentially execute Docker containers and scale them in the cloud. That was kind of my main uh, business. Uh, so my perspective is that I'm really interested on the aspect of how to scale the LLM model executions uh, in a cloud. And for me, that was like no brainer actually to build very simple API and provide like some kind of like execution model uh, for LLMs. Uh, for generic purpose usage, like calling APIs from the front end and abstracting away general model hosting problems uh, that usually like AI engineers face nowadays. Uh, but yeah, it turned out that uh, there is even cases that uh, some customers can't even use other servers or they refuse call APIs. And that was the main topic today that we wanted to discuss uh, the specific case that we have done for uh, one of our customers. So executing the LLM model directly in the browser without using any external uh, services or APIs, uh, everything works uh, directly in the browser. And that was essentially the custom LLM model that we fine tuned. Uh, so yeah, that, that will be generally the topic for today's call, uh, <laughs> today's, uh, presentation, yeah, uh, everything goes to calls nowadays. Yeah, this is like a good place to introduce myself, actually. Uh, I'm Tigran, uh, so I uh, run the company called Trescale, uh, which is essentially the abstractions on top of the AI models. Uh, I've been living in Finland for the past four years, but uh, previously when I've been in Yerevan, uh, so I had a few startups here, uh, I'm sure if few of you might know the Gazar AM, which is a fruit and vegetable delivery service that I've been a co-founder. And yeah, I'm in around like, yeah, 11 years actually in software engineering in general. Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel. So uh, after this might be a good time to subscribe as well. So yeah, back to the topic. No other like things to go through. So we had this picture essentially for our service that we were planning to sell for the customer. But first of all, customer refused to use any sorts of external uh, services like OpenAI or things like that, uh, even hosting on their own. That was a very terrible decision for them. Uh, they might, I'm not sure what changed now, but like back then they were concerned of the data privacy or things like that. And because everything was, uh, had been hosted directly inside the one laptop, which is their workers. So they were in medical field. Uh, we weren't able to install any software on uh, their uh, computer. So the logical option was, okay, if they're using the browser, that's like a very generic thing. And browser has its own runtime let's try to actually execute models on the browser itself. So that was the main uh, like thing I, I decided to try at least uh, what's gonna happen. Uh, so logically, I started to research what's available. And the first thing that uh, kind of caught my attention is this uh, machine learning model execution runtime called Onyx, uh, which is uh, created by Microsoft internally, but then it's, it leaves on, the, on its own. They have their own machine learning model structure and execution flow. And it's very hard to convert uh, kind of classic ML models in PyTorch nowadays, how, how you fine tune them into their runtime. And it's very slow compared to other platforms. So that wasn't the option, but they still have the ability to run things on the browser uh, specifically the transformers models 
uh, that they use for small things like converting text into multiple languages. And another option was uh, available is the project called MLC, uh, which is essentially the same thing as Onyx. They have their own runtime. Uh, and back then they also had this library called WebLLM, which was very buggy. Uh, I wasn't able to execute even simple things uh, on the browser side. Uh, but now, frankly, this is the best option. If I will start like doing this project today, Web LLM is probably the best option. They also have the Web GPU support and everything is fixed nowadays. It's really good option uh, for these kind of use cases. But yeah, for, for me, that wasn't also the option. So I jumped straight into a bit hardcore stuff. Uh, so I'm not sure like, if you know or not, like Llama CPP is probably the most popular nowadays uh, LLM execution library, if you call. There is too many projects built on top of Llama CPP. For example, I use Olama daily basis and we host Olama or, or on our own. And it's able to execute things like Llama, Mistral, Gemma, Falcon, pretty much all of the open source models that available now. Uh, Llama CPP is able to execute and the founder created this library specifically because it doesn't have any dependencies uh, based on the runtime that it's executing. So uh, from the words of founder, like he was kind of very upset that uh, uh, runtimes like PyTorch, which is like, or Torch in general, which is nowadays pretty much a standard, it has very um, much dependent uh, interface on the uh, runtime or like operating system that it's running on. But the founder of Llama CPP tried to at least abstract this type of thing. So it was kind of, pretty logical to think like uh, we can just take the Llama CPP and uh, try to compile that to WebAssembly and then run that WebAssembly in the browser. So that was the idea. And uh, from the perspective of Llama CPP, at least uh, they had really good examples on how to do this kind of basic stuff. And I've been able to uh, construct basic implementation of the compiler script, which is, as you can see, like just a couple of lines. Uh, I've been using the M MS Scripten, uh, which is a standard way of compiling essentially the C++ uh, projects into WebAssembly. It has very basic functionality, just making a CMake, and for those who don't know, CMake is just a configuration format for C++ projects. Uh, and yeah, these few lines essentially compiles Llama CPP into WebAssembly without that much complication. Uh, so the complication part starts uh, when you try to actually execute a model. And after like a couple of weeks trial and errors, uh, so I found that without providing this uh, uh, force file system flag, which essentially creates a virtual file system within WebAssembly for Llama CPP just to emulate the file system and take out and run an actual model from a virtual environment. And also provide the maximum memory of four gigabytes, which is actually the hard limit for the WebAssembly to have as a memory capacity. You can't literally execute any other way uh, LM models with less memory, but at the same time, you're limited to four gigabytes only in WebAssembly. There is no way uh, out of this limitation. But for mod small models, this works fine. Uh, and after providing these flags, essentially uh, the compilation went through fine and uh, the output was just kind of three files, uh, main.js, uh, main basm, which is the binary WebAssembly format, and an actual main uh, worker MGS, uh, which is just a wrapper to essentially help you execute things uh, in the browser for the WebAssembly. Uh, the rest, the worker.js file is something that we're gonna look uh, through. 
Uh, and I promise there will be no C++ kind of things uh, moving forward. The rest is just JavaScript. But to give you just an idea, so we have the main VASM file, which essentially contains the Llama CPP functionality. The rest is just the JavaScript wrapper to pass the arguments that executes the Llama CPP uh, functionality. But the fact that Llama CPP could be compiled to VASM without any dependencies, that's pre pretty amazing. And uh, they, they are actually working now uh, to support also WebGPU for these kind of use cases. Yeah, so moving forward, <laughs> uh, now JavaScript part. So in the uh, UI application side, there is two kind of big components. First is main UI thread, uh, which could be like React JS application or uh, Svelte, anything, even Next.js server works fine. Uh, but we have to create two separate flows. One is web, web worker and another an actual main thread of the React that, that is running. So in this like piece of code, this is how we generally initialize the web worker. And whenever we re receive a message from our uh, worker JS file, which is supposedly going, going to be the LLM output uh, from Llama CPP's uh, WebAssembly. Uh, we, we are going to just display that on a UI uh, using the classic standard things. There is kind of nothing new actually here. Uh, it just appends the output coming from a worker to some kind of state that we have in our React application. So this is like pretty basic uh, in, in terms of like implementation. The complication starts uh, with actually worker file, uh, which uh, frankly, I wanted to kind of dive deeper in this worker JS, but at some point I understood that I can't display the entire functionality. I'll just bring some, some, some of it, very <laughs> kind of little tiny parts just to give understanding on like how generally this works. So first of all, the worker JS file itself contains the import of main JS, uh, which if you kind of remember from this part, it's the output of the actual WebAssembly compilation that we got. And when we import that, it essentially contains the wrapper functionality of uh, the WebAssembly that we are going to execute. This also has the ability to tie to STD out, uh, which in kind of Linux's terms means the output of the application itself, everything that you see in the console log when you run some kind of terminal-based application. That's what we have to capture because Llama CPP's example is actually uh, like built for running in the terminal. So we are kind of simulating that uh, within the browser, just running as a web assembly. And the mod module initialization and everything that contains in main.js is just an abstraction of that uh, for the JavaScript to get used. And yeah, that after like initializing the model, second like very tricky part is to actually download the model itself, uh, which is uh, right now just fetching from the local directory uh, because it's a basic React application written in Vite. So I have the model file in the public directory, but still we have to fetch it, save that into memory, and then create an actual uh, file kind of in a virtual environment of the WebAssembly. That's like the most trickiest part. Because uh, in, in some like terms, an actual uh, like Google Chrome, for example, doesn't allow you to uh, save more than two gigabytes of array buffer. So in, in other terms, in Google Chrome, you are not able to execute any model that is more than two gigabytes. You just literally can't download more than two gigabytes. But in Fi Firefox, for example, Firefox allows up to four gigabytes which is kind of better. And in general, this piece of code, like in general, this running LLM inside the browser in Firefox works faster uh, on my tests. 
so I don't know exactly why, might be these uh, buffer sizes that Firefox allows more memory to be allocated for the WebAssembly in general. But yeah, after like having this all setup process done, the model initialization, file creation for the virtual environment, this is like the final step actually, just to run uh, the main function that we have uh, for our model. And here things are a bit simpler. If you ever use some kind of a terminal uh, application from Node.js, this is exactly how it works. We're just passing the arguments. The model path that we created uh, here, it's model uh, gugoof, like, or GGUF, which is the format of Llama CPP. And we have a couple of odd other arguments just kind of to display uh, stuff on a UI uh, and natural prompt that is given from our React application. So this is kind of how the flow works, but I want to emphasize more on uh, this part because that's the most trickiest one. Uh, in the tests, we had very weird cases where we had a model of let's say two gigabytes or more, and it was always failing without giving any reason. So this was very hard to catch what's wrong until we figured out that it's just a browser-based limitation of the array buffers of how much memory in general browser can allocate for the web of assembly to execute. Uh, that was the very trickiest part. But after this, uh, like main function execution, uh, which called call main, and that's generated by the WebAssembly compilation. It's not something that we were right. It's just uh, this model execution happens as a separate runtime in the browser. So yeah, after having this code base, the basic demo looks like this. And we have uh, tested this many times with different models. The uh, execution flow, very simple. It works fine on the CPU as well if you have a small model. Uh, but for larger model, this kind of uh, doesn't make sense in general. For example, you can't execute model that is bigger than two gigabytes, which is pointless for any kind of generic good, uh, like speaking LLM uh, models. But for small ones like uh, like fine tuning your own small models like we have here. This is uh, the movie uh, review categorization LLM model, which is less than one gigabyte and it executes really good uh, on the CPU inside the browser uh, without even any GPU usage. But with the project of this kind of web LLM, it's also possible to actually uh, use uh, web GPU nowadays, they, they support that one as well, which makes a bit things a bit faster. Uh, but yeah, that's the whole story of the execution process. Now like the from practical parts, I, I know like it was very technical jargon. Uh, I'll kind of want to focus more on the limitations, why we actually need this uh, from uh, limitations perspective, this is the obviously the biggest one. You literally can't execute uh, m bigger models, like larger than two gigabytes. It's definitely not possible. The Google Chrome will fail and Firefox will be okay to download the file, but still execution is limited to four gigabytes of uh, internal memory. And you can't even like save uh, the file uh, within the virtual memory. So this makes pointless to actually think about larger models. But again, like executing small models like Phi2 from Microsoft or Gemma2b from Google, which was released a few months ago, uh, this makes like total sense. It's possible, it's doable. And for small tasks, small use cases, uh, this can be like very effective without having any server. It's not optimal for, of course, like larger use cases, like if you have large prompt or like generic use case, this doesn't make sense. But from technical perspective, uh, this actually 
uh, makes things uh, a bit interesting from the perspective that you can actually take Phi2 uh, model, base model, fine tune that to some very specific uh, data set and then have it available very small, like few hundred megabytes of LLM model that can be executed directly in the browser. Uh, and for some use cases, for example, we had the medical record summarization, which had to be done uh, on the laptop of the doctor without having any external uh, software. That worked really well. And it, the performance of the model was good as well. And uh, yeah, we had this uh, like effective JavaScript imp implementation of uh, that sort. Uh, yeah, so that was like very short <laughs> and very technical. I didn't want it to go all the way uh, from like very deep into implementation side because I'm, I'm sure you might have some questions that I might answer uh, if like any raise a hand. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question about uh, the limits. Uh, so currently it's split the path to several files and uh, all of them to my chunks instead of one large file. So the uh, MLC, let me show you. The MLC uh, framework actually supports that, uh, this one. It's a really good option if you want to execute stuff on the browser nowadays. They have their own runtime and they split the file into multiple chunks because of these two gigabytes limitations in, in array buffer. Uh, but Llama CPP doesn't have that capability. Uh, the model format itself in Llama CPP, just one large file. That's kind of how it works. On our implementation, we didn't have that option. But now with this web LLM, their past release like one month ago uh, allows a splitting model into multiple files, like sharding in a sense, and they also support web GPU for execution. So this is right now really good option if you try to execute stuff on a browser. Yeah, thanks. And uh, about executing, uh, do you execute the file from scratch on each uh, request or keep in memory and you use it like a PI with, with already preloaded data? Yeah, it's, it's deep reloaded. So every time when, for example, you reload the page, we download the file, load it, that into uh, Llama CPP, and then each execution is just running uh, shared on, on top of the shared memory that, that's all already allocated. So we, we don't download. It's like a chat interface. So you, we, we preload stuff and then execute prompt every time when it so comes. So a Llama a process uh, keeps in memory between calls inside the one. Page. Yes, yes, that, that, that's, that's why we have this uh, kind of TTY register, which essentially uh, attaches a uh, separate JavaScript callback on top of the uh, STD out, like a terminal output. And uh, every time when Llama CPP gives some kind of output, we just take that and then provide input. Uh, so we implemented that in C++ actually, that for, for specifically that use case. Thank you. Thank you.